Hey everybody, welcome to the weekly Planet's Caravan of Garbage where we look at an old thing. Is it good? Probably not, because it's old. <laughs> well, name a, name a good thing that's also old. You can't. I decided uh, to check out, and since we're doing it's, it's Star Wars, we're doing, we're doing a, it's, it's Star a Wars. Trilogy theme. A trilogy of Star Wars themed episodes. Absolutely. Okay, great. Don't you worry about it. So this week, I decided to check out the first episode of Star Wars Droids. Right. The Adventures of R2 D2 and C3PO. Is this the first ever animated Star Wars piece? No, there's a bit in. Uh, that terrible holiday special. The less said about it, the better. Sure. <laughs> yeah. First of all, uh, C-3PO and R2-D2. Great. The, the great, the great characters. Did they get both of their voices back? Well, look, they certainly got, they certainly got Anthony Daniels as the voice of C-3PO. And for R two D two, I assume like a Casio keyboard or something like that. <laughs> right. First thing I noticed is this: this is Star Wars, so it's gonna you know it's gonna have a That's great. That's the first thing you noticed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but of course it's gonna have some great music, yeah. right? Obviously, you know all the all the Star Wars mu uh, movies have uh, spectacular, spectacular music. soundtrack. Even the bad movies have great soundtracks. Yeah, well, you've got the great John Williams and all the uh, and all the the Star Wars movies. So a this, living legend. This, we, we, from this theme song, we get uh, we get Stuart Copeland from. From the police they've roped him in somehow his theme song is called trouble again and it's a huey lewis in the news style pop song with lyrics great about getting into getting into trouble again would you like to hear some please of it? tell me you've got that ready to go i've got it ready to go Slap in the face. <laughs> that to me sounds like that they would have put some money behind this. So does the animation reflect that? For the time. You know, it kind of does. Okay, then. Yeah. So we open up in orbit for the planet Ingo. Right. Uh, now, now Star Wars is famous for all kinds of varieties of planets. Yeah, they what, are. What they? kind of planet do you think Ingo is? Ice planet? Desert planet. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> they got me. They got you. <laughs> Which is perfect, I think, because especially with the animation of the time, what you want is you want a, like a yellowish desert planet which is the perfect contrast to like a yellowish kind of droid. <laughs> sure. Really, really stands out, you know what I mean? Anyway, we we we, uh, we follow like this trail of debris down to the planet Ingo. Right. And we discover we discover a twerking C three PO. He's doing what? a little bit, little bit of a twerk. Yeah. He's twerking back and forth. He's he's been uh, jettisoned onto the planet by his previous owner, a smuggler. When are these set? These are set before episode. Four. So his life is just a series of being jettisoned onto desert planets. Absolutely, it is. Yeah. Okay, then. And yeah, and so th this this era, they've seen some stuff like <laughs> yeah. already. Like they've seen dismemberments, they've seen murders, they've seen all sorts of stuff. Anyway, and he's like, oh, and he's he's lamenting he's lamenting the death of R two D two because he can't find him. He's like, oh, is a uh, you you miracle of modern technology. You 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 know you you you're a prince among droids. I miss you, kind of thing, or whatever. And then bloody, he comes out of the sand and he's like, you piece of garbage. I hate you. I hate your guts. You dumb droid. I hate you. So they're like, what are we gonna do? And then all of a sudden, this land speeder rocks up. Right. In fact, two two land speeders rock oh. up. These these two best of pals. There's Thor. Right. This is this is Thor. What he's, a haircut! He's a cool all American dude sure. of of space, and then he's his best pal Jord, who's funny fat guy. What? What is? It's like, Thor oh, and Jord. It took me a while to work out what is going on with that guy's head, but I figured <laughs> it out. In the it's end. a thumb. He's yeah, got a it's thumb a thumb. Yeah. yeah. Right. So C three PO does his classic. I'm I'm a protocol droid. You know. Right. Right. I'm here bit, to, here yep. to serve and learn know a million languages, and they're like, it's an astromech droid. R two D two. Get this gold thing out of the way. We we need this astromech droid. So they're like. They, they pile them in. This show has a lot of C-3PO pratfalls. Right, right. There's at least four in this. That's too many. How long is this? 23 minutes. That's too many. But they're like, okay, let's get this, let's get this back to home base kind right. of thing. Let's get, let's get Astromech and C-3PO to some extent back, sure. back to home base kind of thing. But they end up, they end up going through like the forbidden zone, the restricted zone. <sighs> why would you? Well, I mean, you live there. Why would you? Exactly why would you? <laughs> in many ways, it's a real dumb move. But all these bloody the bloody seeker droids pop out like these okay. these, these floating spheres that are going to... And they're, and they're coming up on Jord, right? Yeah. Big fat party animal, Jord. And, and he's like, all right, oh man, I'm done for. I've got to get out of here, right? And he clip, hits a little button on his belt there. Yeah. This is my favourite move. And he ejects, and his outfit expands into like a... Like a jelly bean. He turns into a giant jelly bean, a giant springy <laughs> jelly bean, right? 
pretty great, right? And he, how is he getting away with that, though? How is, he, how is that faster than staying in the, in the speeder? But he, he survives. So they're being pursued by these tank droids, right? Mm. And, and we think maybe it's curtains for them, but then we see they're being, they're being observed by this, this oh. brave desert warrior of some sort. The distance. Who could it be, right? Boba Fett? No, it's, oh. not, it's nobody important oh. in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> they're all in a, a heckin' bit of trouble, right? Mm. So C-3PO's like, oh, no, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll we're just gonna do. We're just gonna do Obi Wan. Everybody's Obi Wan Kenobi. Everybody's Obi Wan Kenobi in this universe. Yeah. So they're like, oh, I'll, oh, oh d- back away. I'll, I'll take care of this. And he grabs a rock and he hurls it. Just as our mysterious figure is like shooting a laser at, right. the, at the at the at the, the the tank mech, right? Yeah, yeah. And he hits it with a rock and it explodes. And he's like, oh, I did it. I did it. So then we see the big reveal: the mysterious brave warrior, desert warrior, is in fact. A pretty lady. A beautiful woman. Beautiful woman. <laughs> Look, in many ways, when in watching this episode, I'm like, oh, this has a lot of parallels to like future Star Wars things. That's like kind of a Ray thing. But then I'm like, it's probably just a coincidence. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, he's there. He's he's surveying the the rubble, the the, the mayhem. Like, that look, he's at, wrought, look at the good like, work I right. did. Right, and then and Thor and Jord are like, you did it, man. You're the best. He m- just magoos his way through it, right? <laughs> so cut to the owner of the droids, local crime lord Tig from. Or as he's referred to as by his underling, Tiggy. Little subplot, he hates being called Tiggy. I was going to say, that's not something you'd call your boss. No, well, see, that's the thing. So Tig is actually the son of a very renowned crime oh, boss. So size of... from. Ro- size from. Size from. So you think it's a pun. It's one of those names you think it's going to be a pun. But it's not. It's not a pun. But anyway, so he's like, oh, what, who are these who are these troublemakers? They're, they're going to interfere with our plans. Our plans to... to... Oh, I'm so upset. Oh, he There's is my a... upset face. He looks like the the. Vi- Villain from bloody Shira. Hordak. Yeah, Hordak. I was gonna say Hordak, but he's, I didn't think I didn't think I was right. <laughs> he's a little bit Hordak light, or pre-Hordak, depending on when Shira came out. Absolutely. Who even knows? But and, and then here's the underling, and he's all like, oh. He's also a thumb. <laughs> exactly. But they're like, oh, the, what were they? What were these people doing? What, what were they doing here? We're gonna. They're here to interfere with our plans. We're we're gonna we're gonna defeat all the other gang lords. We're gonna defeat Jabba the Hutt and etc. etc. Oh. Using our super weapon. What is that? They built a super weapon. But what is it? It's called, it's called the Trigon. It's some sort of satellite weapon. I looked it up. Trigon One, manufactured by the From Gang yep. class weapon satellite. I know. Yeah, all right. Technical specifications: armament, planet destroying weapon. Parentheses claimed never actually seen destroying a planet. <laughs> so, spoiler alert: none of that. So, anyway, the boys, Thor and Jord. And and C three PO and R two D two the boys they all get to yeah. they, they head back to the workshop right and we learn a bit about Thor and Jaw they're these two dudes right mm-hmm. and they want to get in the they want to get in the the land speed the land speed races which are off planet right that's right, right. been a whole goal they need an astromech droid to help pilot the land speeder because that's what you need in the races apparently okay a little nod to pod racing or it's a coincidence <laughs> and and they're like oh man George sorry you lost your land speeder you know because you had to eject into your weird jelly bean orange <laughs> costume and he's like no problem but I've still got the white witch which is their bloody they've built a legendary la- land speed ah, the white witch right it's got some like goat horns on the side yeah it's because it's legendary or man ram right? horns yeah right and then anyway Thor and the boys Thor, mm-hmm. Thor and C-3PO and R2-D2 they dash out for a little bit right 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 and then they, they're out for like two seconds right yeah and then some are bloody some are bloody the, the gang lords drones their droids show up and bloody bloody sneak jawed away they just grab him they're like, this is this is one little orange jelly bean lad we want for ourselves. We need- <laughs> that looks like it's designed specifically for kidnapping. For kidnapping, exactly. Yeah, yeah. well, you would, wouldn't you? you yeah. know? So Thor and C three PO and R two D two, they're like, this was a little suspicious. Let's go back to the, let's go, let's go back to the, the workshop. All right. right. Prattfall. Nice. C three PO Prattfall. Right. So then they go back to the, the workshop and they're like, he's gone. They've they've taken him. We're gonna get him back. Prattfall. God. C three PO Prattfall. Prattfall. He's got a bucket on his head. Very good. Yep. And then, and then, bloody the, the mysterious warrior lady shows up, and she's like, "Hey, it's it's me." What's her name? Kia is her name, like the car. Ray's original name was Kira. Oh, definitely more... a nod eh. or a coincidence. It's almost know. anyway. Sorry, go on. Anyway, so anyway, she, she shows up and she's like, "I'm just a regular person. I was lost in the desert, and I heard you guys are mechanics. So bloody, I'm just here to maybe you guys can help me out." They're like, "Okay, we got to get out of here," but then they they go outside, right? And yeah. they they go to bloody start up their their one remaining land speeder. Uh-huh. Is it right. the good one? No, it's the regular one. Oh. White Witch is still in the workshop, okay, right? Gotcha. But then all of a sudden they're being surrounded by kidnap bots. Bloody <laughs> bloody kidnap bots, right? Just bloody as far as the eye can see. And all he's got is this weird 
weird glowing Q-tip kind what of situation. That? It's a giant ear. It's bloody, oh. you know. Thor, you're bloody surrounded by kidnap bots. What are you What are you going to do? And then she's like, R2-D2, help him out. And they grab the bloody white witch and they do a swift getaway. Look at that. Nice. Look, swift, look how swift it is. That is swift. It's real swift, you know what I mean? That's as swift as it gets. Yeah. Mm. Now, the best thing about the White Witch is we, we see throughout the episode is it's primarily good as a battering ram. Nice. Like this, this beautifully, this, this beautiful this custom sleek and land. elegant. Yeah, it's just, designed for, for, just for smashing robots and stuff, <laughs> just knocking them over, right? And so they're like, okay, well, we found the, the gang lord's secret base. Right. It's never really established how. Just did, I guess. They just did. And they're like, okay, we got we got to get in there, right? Yeah. And so cut to R2-D2 doing a little bit of his... Classic computer yeah, manipulation kind of situation, right? Yep, yep. And they're like, how do we get R2-D2 out of there? And they're like, the same way we got him in. Misdirection. First of all, we never see <laughs> them get him in. It's just, there's a whole scene missing. But anyway, so they're just like, all right, we, we, we'll do that. And yeah. then they just they just show up at the front. of They like they like zip in front of the sentry droids, the tank droids. Okay. And then they open... The gates open mm -hmm. so they can send out some more tank droids. Right, right. And then R2-D2 just sneaks out. Just rolls just, out. Just, just rolls out kind of thing. Okay. And they're like, okay, we've got all the data. Let's go back in again. It's very... <laughs> what? Yeah, I know, right? So smash cut to star wipe to... Yes. Inside the base... We got we got the greasy henchman. Yep. We've got we've got Jord. He's in there. He's just in there cracking wise because he's a big fat party animal. Yeah. He's like he gives it a bit of hey man, nice suit, and the guy shoves him onto a seat, and he's like nice seat. Nice seat. You know that classic wordplay. Very good. Yeah, it's good, right? And then the the gang lord shows up, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you off world to bloody work on my something or others. I don't know. Whatever I do. Yeah, whatever I do, exactly <laughs> right. And then Jord's like, oh, you're not, you're not. The, gr the great gang lot I've heard so much about. You're just his, you're just his son, I don't care. And he puts his feet up, puts his feet up on the desk. It's a bold manoeuvre. Bold manoeuvre, right? Exactly, yeah. And so our gang lord friend, he sort of spills the beans. He's, he's going to plan to use the, the super weapon to kill all the other gangs and then... You know, and, take societies all the, and, yeah, and societies and yeah, societies and take all their territory. Yeah, yeah, sure. Presumably, we never know. We don't even know if it works. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's, here's a, this gang lord. Like, he explains his plot and he explains that he doesn't trust... He doesn't trust humans. That's why all his... All these mechanisms are like droids. Okay, it's sure. Like, I build droids. I'm the best. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what you're here for, kind mm -hmm, of thing. Mm -hmm, gotcha. And then George's giving him a bit too much lip, and so the henchman just shoves him over, and like shoves him like onto a shoves him onto the couch, like into the ground, and then he's like, "Nice couch." Yeah. No, but then he's like, "Couldn't get a droid to do that." I'm fairly confident uh, you could. Yeah. Yeah. yeah th <laughs> right. That's a pretty basic maneuver right, right right so anyway <laughs> the good guys are like okay we're gonna we're gonna sneak into this base right and and, and kia's like how are we gonna get through this this door here like there's there's no way in right and and thor's like the door that r2d2 just went through yeah yeah, yeah. but then thor's like oh no i've got a, i've got a way so this guy came back in the day to for us to to work on one of his ships one of his speeders and he yeah. never came back and he just he just left this in here it's a bloody bloody lightsaber <laughs> <laughs> you know that you know that he just just left it in his speeder. You yeah. know what I mean? You know that weapon that uh, that represents your journey, sure, of training to become a Jedi. Absolutely, and, it, and you build it, and it's the most incredible high technology. That it's the be. most important thing that you own. Anyway, he just left it in his speeder. I think it was in the glove box <laughs> or behind the seats or something like that. Anyway, so he's just, he just uses it to like whack down some doors and stuff, and then all of a sudden, uh, a, a droid shows up in the maintenance sure. room. And Kieran, uh, C-3PO are like, uh, and C-3PO is like, oh, I've, I've got this. Uh, we're, we're the maintenance crew. Hits him and with the, a rock. And the, dro and the, well, the droid's like, no, no, I'm the maintenance crew. And he's like, well, we're security? And then the security guy droid shows up. So he's like, so we're, um, um, and then there's just a scuffle. There's a scuffle. People are, people are mounting droids. <laughs> there's just, there's just some hurling about. And they do the, the, the classic move, I feel, which is just... Get the two droids to run into each other, nice. and they explode. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. What a well-built droid. <laughs> exactly right. So Thor gets to Jord's prison cell that he's yep, being stored sure. in, right? Haircut gets to Thumbs' prison cell. Oh, so. I should have been calling oh, yeah. Haircut and Thumbs. <laughs> God damn it! Ah, oh. Thumbs belly bumps some droids out of the way. Nice. Into a, into a storage closet. Haircut uses his lightsaber to just cut. Thumbs bonds open. Our crime lord's watching it all on the monitors. And he's like, I'm going to get these guys. Everybody, all my droids go to Sector 5. Mm -hmm. And then C-3PO does the unprecedented move of just going on the comm system and going, oh, actually, um, all droids to Sector 6. And they're like, oh, okay. And they just... <laughs> 
Just, just zip back, you know what I mean? He's got some skills He's in got this, some though. skills, that's He's what I'm some, talking about, right? He's got some initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And then he, the, our, our, our gang lord activates all kinds of more security systems and there's lasers going off kind of thing. Right, right. But then he's like, we're going to get these guys before the lasers destroy the building. <laughs> because he's not he's not really thought this through, you know right. what I mean? And then... Uh, more security droids show up in the in the like in the in the maintenance hatch. Yep. yep. And C3PO pretends to be holding Kia hostage. Very good. Which is a good move. Yeah. But also I think a very cowardly move. He's not a kidnapping droid. No, and exactly. But he is a user woman as a human shield droid. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You know enough, what I mean? Yeah. Right, exactly. I'll pay that. Right. And they they get away from that, right? And then they're like oh, oh the the uh, the gang lord's like, okay, activate more droids. I got some flying like gunboat droids outside, sure. gonna activate those, get them out there, yep. get them out there, and then they're all they're all Covering the, all the escape routes, right? They're like, okay, how do we how do we get out of this? All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we'll activate the tank droids. The tank droids will go out and mm. fight the the flying droids. Makes sense. And they'll all just kill each other, and we'll escape in the ensuing madness. That'll that'll work, right? Yeah. And so they're all trapped. They're under fire, and then they're like, okay, C three PO, get out, get you gotta you gotta you gotta activate the controls. You gotta activate those tank droids, right? Mm. And so they send him out there. So he goes out, and there's this control panel, and he doesn't understand it. There's so many buttons, he can't operate. He can't lift the can't lift the panel, or whatever. Sure. And he finds it like there's a turret gun, and it's following him back and forth because mm. there's just turret guns just in this building, just blowing everybody up. Yeah, I guess just, so. Yeah, sure. just slowly destroying the building, right? And he's like, oh, I've got an idea. And he just sort of, he goes in front of the panel mm. and then he, he leaps past it and they, it just blows him up. It just blows up the panel. And then oh, leaving okay, him only with good. one button behind the panel <laughs> that he just presses and it activates all the tank droids, right? Amazing. And, and they, they head out into the, the wilderness, yeah. the desert wilderness, and the tank droids and the sentry droids and the, the bloody seeker orbs and all this sort of stuff are just destroying each other. Which is the perfect move, opportunity to just just fly out through the middle of them. Beautiful, Beautiful. right in right in the line of fire. Right in the just line of fire, just right. Straight through. Yeah, and so they they finally make their escape, and we cut back to our gang lord, who's very. Oh, he's crying. He's crying. He's openly <laughs> weeping in his seat, and he's like, "Oh, I guess I guess relying on a whole bunch of droids that were programmed to kill everything, including themselves, <laughs> was not was not the uh, the smartest move to have ever made." Anyway, they get out of there. They've got their astromech droid. They find themselves a ship. They they all they become the new crew of this ship, right? Fantastic. And they're like, "Okay, we're gonna get out of there. We're gonna make our way to the, this this new planet. We're gonna become the kings of bloody land speeder racing." And then, one more pratfall. <laughs> For good I, measure. I can't remember the context of this <laughs> one. I assume he's just surprised by something, or there's a, some slight movement in the ship, and then he just falls out. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you reckon of that as a, as a show? Look, you know what? As a kid's show, yes. I would have loved that. Right? Yeah. It has its moments. Yeah. Like there, there's some parts. You would have the- loved the Stuart Copeland opening theme song. Yeah, that, I love that now. So yeah, almost right? certainly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the haircuts. Yep. Great. I love the the uh, the parallels to Episode Seven. I've just got here. There's a character that shows up later in the series called Gear Kaibo Rencha. Wow. Maybe so, this isn't a coincidence, all of this stuff. Can't all be, can it? And then yes, again, you throw it could, together so many random... Random syllables. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, this is the, it's the random syllable show. Just, yeah. <laughs> just throw a whole bunch together and you've got yourself a whole amazing cast of characters. Absolutely, mm. yeah. So was this a show that you would continue watching? Ooh, maybe I'll give it one more. I don't believe you. <laughs> no, right? You saw right through me. <laughs> Great. Good stuff, Mason. Thank you. We'll be back next week for another episode of Caravan of yeah, Garbage. More Star Wars stuff. Spectacular. Mm. If you're watching the video version of this, there's actually an extended audio version linked below, so you can check that out if you want. Fewer pictures. Fewer pictures. Way, way less. Mm. Yeah, probably, probably to its detriment. But, probably uh, just the one. Yeah, that's it. Mm. But no, we appreciate you uh, you watching and or listening. Thank you very much. We'll be Like we said, we'll be back one more time oh, yeah. in preparation for Rogue One. Grab it, Jamie, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.